Black holes are one of the most interesting and terrifying objects in the universe. Scientifically speaking, rather than being an object, a black hole is a spherical region in space characterized by a tremendous gravitational field. The gravitational field of a black hole is so strong that once within the black hole, not even light can escape. Black holes can be of different types based on their mass. They can also be classified based on whether they are charged or exhibit rotation. The simplest black hole is a static, non-rotating, and electrically neutral black hole called the Schwarzschild black hole. In recent times, some critics have raised serious questions about the foundational theories of black holes. They argue that astronomer Carl Schwarzschild's calculations on the event horizon of a massive black hole were fundamentally flawed. These critics contend that the concept of an event horizon, a spherical boundary around a black hole's gravitational field, cannot be proven by current physics. Doubters claim that gravity's application to black holes is unproven, and even the notion of a black hole being massive is questionable. They argue that the idea of an event horizon is based on unproven theories that space can bend and that time and space-time exist. Thus, they label the concept of a massive black hole and its event horizon as mathematical nonsense. Critics further argue that Schwarzschild's claims based on Einstein's theory of general relativity were incorrect and unrealistic. They challenge the idea that a star with at least three solar masses can become a massive black hole if compressed to a small size. They state that a star's mass remains constant regardless of compression, akin to compressing a sponge where only density increases, not mass. These dissenters assert that the gravitational pull of such a compressed star would remain the same, meaning it would not become a black hole and light would not disappear. They accuse physicists of falsely believing that mass and gravitational pull increase enormously upon compression without additional mass. According to these critics, Schwarzschild's claims were based on what they call Einstein's incorrect theory of general relativity which they argue is fraudulent. They insist that curved space, time, and space-time are non-existent, and that millions of physicists have built on these incorrect theories for almost 120 years, undermining true scientific progress. They argue that many theories in physics are not science, but pseudoscience, and that physicists have been misled into accepting unrealistic mathematical results. The Schwarzschild radius and the event horizon are both characteristics of black holes, but they are not the same. To clarify, the event horizon of a black hole is the limit of the black hole's influence. It is the boundary separating the region of influence of the black hole from the rest of the universe. Essentially, it's the point beyond which nothing, not even light, can escape the gravitational pull of the black hole. On the other hand, the Schwarzschild radius is a specific measure of the distance between the black hole's center, also known as the singularity, and its event horizon. It represents the radius of a sphere that, if all the mass of the black hole were to be compressed within it, would result in the formation of an event horizon. Critics often conflate these terms, leading to misunderstandings about the nature of black holes. Why is the Schwarzschild radius significant? The Schwarzschild radius is significant because as long as any object, whether it is a rocket or star or planet, stays at a distance greater than the Schwarzschild radius, the gravitational pull of the black hole is not deadly. At distances greater than the Schwarzschild radius, the black hole's gravitational pull is the same as the gravitational pull of an object with the same mass as that of the black hole. This means that if our own sun were to collapse into a black hole, the Earth and other planets in our solar system would remain in their orbits, unaffected by the sudden change. Any object whose radius is smaller than its Schwarzschild radius is called a black hole. The surface at the Schwarzschild radius acts as an event horizon in a non-rotating body. A rotating black hole operates slightly differently. Neither light nor particles can escape through this surface from the region inside, hence the name black hole. But did you know that black holes can be classified based on their Schwarzschild radius, or equivalently, by their density? Density here is defined as the mass of a black hole divided by the volume of its Schwarzschild sphere. This relationship reveals something intriguing. The smaller the black hole, the denser it is. 
as the Schwarzschild radius is linearly related to mass, while the enclosed volume corresponds to the third power of the radius, small black holes are therefore much more dense than large ones. Supermassive black holes, the colossal titans of the cosmos, are the largest type of black holes known to astronomers. These gravitational behemoths range from hundreds of thousands to billions of solar masses. To put this into perspective, supermassive black holes up to 21 billion times the mass of our Sun have been detected. Unlike their smaller counterparts, supermassive black holes have surprisingly low average densities. In fact, the average density of a supermassive black hole can be less than that of water. This might seem counterintuitive, but remember, a black hole is essentially a spherical region in space surrounding a singularity at its center. It's not the singularity itself. The Schwarzschild radius of a black hole is proportional to its mass. Consequently, as an object accumulates more matter at a fixed density, its Schwarzschild radius increases faster than its physical radius. When a body with the density of water reaches around 136 million solar masses, its physical radius is overtaken by its Schwarzschild radius, transforming it into a supermassive black hole. But how do these gigantic entities come into existence? It's believed that supermassive black holes don't form instantly from the collapse of a cluster of stars. Instead, they may begin as smaller, stellar-sized black holes and grow larger over time by accreting matter or even merging with other black holes. Take the supermassive black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy, for example. Its Schwarzschild radius is approximately 12 million kilometers and its mass is about 4.1 million times that of our Sun. Stellar black holes have much greater average densities than supermassive black holes. Imagine an object with a density comparable to the nucleus of an atom about 10 power 18 kilograms per cubic meter. This is the kind of density stellar black holes possess. When an accumulation of matter reaches this nuclear density, it falls within its own Schwarzschild radius at around three solar masses, thus forming a stellar black hole. While supermassive black holes often capture the spotlight due to their colossal sizes, stellar black holes are no less fascinating. These black holes are born from the remnants of massive stars that have ended their life cycles in dramatic supernova explosions. What remains after the explosion is a core so dense that not even light can escape its gravitational pull, creating a stellar black hole. Stellar black holes serve as vital laboratories for studying the extremes of physics. Their immense gravitational fields provide unique environments to test theories of general relativity, quantum mechanics, and even the nature of space-time itself. Observing how matter behaves near these compact objects helps scientists refine their models and deepen our understanding of the universe. While stellar and supermassive black holes have long captured our imaginations and fueled scientific inquiry, there exists another, far more enigmatic category, micro black holes. These minuscule entities, also known as primordial black holes, present a fascinating puzzle. Imagine the mass of Mount Everest, compressed into an object with a Schwarzschild radius smaller than a nanometer. At such a scale, the density would be so extreme that no known mechanism in the current universe could form such compact objects. This leads scientists to speculate that micro black holes might have originated in the early universe right after the Big Bang, when matter densities were extraordinarily high. These hypothetical miniature black holes, if they exist, could provide invaluable insights into the conditions of the early universe. They might also help us understand the fundamental nature of gravity and quantum mechanics. In conclusion, the Schwarzschild radius is a fundamental concept in understanding black holes. From the mysterious nature of black holes to the supermassive and micro black holes, the Schwarzschild radius plays a crucial role in our comprehension of these cosmic phenomena.